feet. Five feet. Plus five, so that's ten feet four inches. Well, maybe that's higher than I initially thought. That's eleven feet right there. I didn't think the dump truck would fit. Good morning and welcome to the Toddcast. We are back on this little horse pasture clearing project. We're going to be working again today with the Cat 309, the Fecon FMX 36 mulching head. Probably going to have to get the steel chainsaw out. It's going to be a good time. I've just got this little group of trees here. Initially, I was going to just cut them down, but I think I'm actually going to just mulch them. I think it'll be beneficial. And then we've got all of these trees to clear out as well. Not a whole lot left though. Not a lot at all. I'm gonna throw some grease into the excavator, do just a little bit of mulching for the new folks that are coming in so they can see that work. We're not gonna overdo it and bore you guys to tears. Hopefully today we'll have this done and be able to start pulling some stumps out. I am not saying do this. I am not recommending doing this. I am just showing you guys how I do this. I have got this handled down. I have got the continuous flow engaged and that head is running on its own. Doing this is not the safest thing in the world, but this is how I like to grease the head. Do not try this at home. I'm very careful and mind my footing walking around this guy, but I do just prefer to grease this with that head spinning. To the count of five, that's plenty of grease. If you're using a manual pump on this head, you get four pumps every four hours to each grease fitting. The grease fitting that's on the inside that I showed you guys the other day, you don't have to grease it, I'm told, every 40 hours. I just feel like with that head going, that it's gonna coat those bearings much better. Before I go anywhere near that head right now, before I go anywhere close to inspecting those teeth, the safety handle is up, it is not engaged, and we're gonna wait for it to come to a complete stop. It's always a good idea to wear a glove when you're spinning this, because if you spin that and you don't get your hand away, and those are brand new, they will slice the meat off of you. But you can see after four hours of cutting, as long as you keep these things out of the dirt, they almost uh, self-sharpen. Look at that. I don't think I really hit any rocks yesterday. I'm gonna check every single one of them. I'm also looking for a gap to open up. Make sure none of those teeth are loosening up. The head feels smooth. It's not grabby. It doesn't have any points where it feels like it tightens up. I have put thousands of hours on this head. Uh, I wish I'd kept track. I really do. I don't know how many hours I put on that motor before I replaced it, but this head paid for itself a couple of times over before I did that. And you replace that head and you keep this thing greased, it's gonna make you a lot of money. I think we're about ready to go. I let that head at just a low idle and continuous flow spin for two or three minutes after I grease it. One thing that lets the warm hydraulic fluid kind of work its way into that motor. And it lets those bearings get good and coated with grease without it just wide open and slinging grease to the outsides. fix her gravel when I get done loading this stuff out it's gonna be a pain it is gonna be a pain but we'll get it done one reason I just took that slope indication is, is to show you guys what kind of slopes we're traversing so it's been raining there's organic material on the ground right now and we are at so right now we're climbing about a 23 24 it's 24 degree slope very little track slippage. 
right there we're starting to slip so I'm gonna grab in and help myself people have asked me how I like these rubber pads on these tracks several times in the last video I love them and as far as them compared to steel tracks I really can't tell much difference but now when you if you get into like say if this thing had tracks with grousers like bulldozer tracks that would be a lot better but comparing just like regular you know excavator tracks to the rubber there's not any much difference that I can tell for folks getting into doing this kind of work we'll talk a little bit today about how I get in position to where I can do this comfortably right now I'm facing uphill it's a 16 degree slope right here a couple of things you can do if you're bobbling a lot put your blade down I always have my blade downhill behind me almost always we'll say and see how much firmer that firmer see how much more firm that is then we'll just lift our blade track our way along well I'll also point out some comparisons right here we've got a white pine right there where I'm at right now is about a three to four inches I just took about a foot off of it before it choked that head down I forgot to turn my efficiency off me I'm a fan of pawing which I'll show you all that more on the bigger trees but it's where you start down low and you just kind of pull your way up well we'll go over here shortly this little stump right here is right in my way we're gonna see if we can kind of pull him around right, yeah. this is not the best tool I'm thinking about welding me a couple of teeth onto that back side there to be able to do this kind of thing easier. That, th that stump is out. Continuing on. We just dropped to a 35 degree slope. Didn't really slide. Now what I'll do, right now we're at a 26 and a half degree slope. How much can we level using the blade? We just dropped to 16.5 degrees slope. Windows are just a little bit foggy this morning. Right in front of us, we've got a pine top that I blew out of a tree yesterday. Technically, there's two right there. The way I do these tops is I work my way in just like this. It's tempting, and sometimes I will even, to just run down through there and chop those limbs because it's gonna be fast and fun. That's great, but those limbs and the weight of them will actually help hold that limb down. So I would just start, like, if the tree was standing up, that top is falling down like that. There's a metal steel rod there for some reason. I don't know why. What I'll do is I'll go up here and then I'll back drag a little. Then I'll pull up, back into it a little. Now I'm not gonna get every bit of it and the reason being is I would have to get into the dirt to get every little bit. Actually I'm doing pretty good right there. But to really get all of it, you've gotta go down into the dirt most of the time. I'm just going to kind of work my way along and I actually like having several tops or limbs stacked up on each other to hold them up off of the ground that really really helps now also keeping sharp teeth helps that head to grab that stuff up off the ground the dull, the more dull your teeth are the more difficult of a time you're going to have with this Well, there's one top. Now we're going to start on the other. Now we'll just show you 
what I was talking about by just knocking all the limbs off. So watch this. See how much more fun that looks? Now see, this one's making a liar out of me. <laughs> that one's actually, when it fell, the bottom limbs didn't break off. <laughs> So it held that stem, the trunk part, up off the ground, and I was just able to make faster time of it than the previous one. As a general rule, th though, that's not how it works. <laughs> oh, I made a liar out of me. Everyone be like, this fool don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Before that skylight fogs over again, I'm gonna show y'all how I blow a top out of a tree. It's very simple. I'll knock these front limbs off and any limb that's gonna grab my hoses. And what I'll do is I'll reach as high as I can up there. And then I'll just start pushing on the tree, but I'll keep going so it blows that top over and around from me. And that's all there is to it. Now, I can just start mulching that stem down. Now let's talk about pawing. It's one of my favorite things to do. You start at the bottom of that stem, or wherever you want to really, and as you put pressure on that stem, you just pull up. This doesn't choke the head down as much as like going down. And also when you're going down, the rotation of that head wants to pull it in. So you'll start out up here and as you cut down it's going to bite in more and more and it's going to want to ch cut chunks off like this let's see if i can get it to do it here ready see how it's wanting to cut in so now i've got to go up here and it's got a weak spot in it and that's why i paw from the bottom up it's harder to paw from the bottom up if you're running like a dedicated machine or a skid steer and then once you get this thing trimmed down to a point where it can just chop at it, you can do this. What you do run the risk of is it catching and snapping it off if you trim it too much. And you'll get to where you can kind of saw up and down, work your way along. See how much easier that is? I've got the stump down just a little bit high to where I'll have something to get a hold of when I go to pull it out. But you've got all these limbs now that have fallen out of that tree. My recommendation, just start out wide and just swing into them. Skimming along the ground. If you see dirt, lift up. And by dirt, I mean if you see it kicking dirt out the backside like that, just lift the head up. You do that just a couple of times, it's almost like a chainsaw. It'll dull the crap out of them teeth. And if it seems like it's not cutting good after you do that, just go ahead and stop and give them a quick sharpening. Now something like this sticking up in the direction I've got a swing or the opposite direction from where I've got a swing, just go ahead and kind of nip it off. Don't hit the stump like I just did. And start out wide. Now this is easiest right here, since you wanna be on contour with the line, that you don't lift yourself way up. Because then, as you swing, and you get over this way, you're gonna swing right into the bank. I just use the blade to kind of stabilize myself here but I stay on sloped with the bank and that way I can just swing back and forth really fast. gotten to so far I'm kind of down here toward where we enter the property at I'm getting close to the house also and I'm getting to where 
I can't get down to that last bit of stuff because of these stumps being in my way of being able to go straight down to it. We got a pretty good bit of debris there. And I've got this little grouping here and I'm having trouble getting in a direction to where I can control where the chips go. And what I want is that debris to stay inside the fence line. But right now, the only way I can get in position there is going to sling a bunch of chips onto the roof. We don't want that. I'm going to throw the bucket on. I'm going to collect, start pulling and collecting everything into a pretty neat pile in an area closer over here. Grind it up in place. And then we'll be able to load it into the truck. Here we go. And what I want to do is get all of these tops without any dirt. That is the main goal. I'm going to stack every bit of this right here. Got quite a bit to pluck out, don't we? I'll be able to maneuver a lot faster just having my bucket on, so this should go pretty quickly. Now in this case, I am leveling myself. Gives me a little bit more leverage. Against the trees. I haven't had to save any turtles on this job. Get out of there. I'm just setting them right there until I get a pretty good bundle of stuff and then I'll grab it all at one time. This guy does not seem very stable. So this could get interesting. I'm just gonna pluck some of these leaves off. Yeah, it's just wobbling around all over the place there. I don't want it coming down on top of the house. I managed to break the top out here. Here we go. Now I got you. Put that up there on the pile with the rest. There's the top. Cut that choker loose. Do that later. Let's go ahead and see about getting a stump or two out. White pine stump number one. White pine stump number two. This is why you don't want white pines right around your house unless you've got them in a big bunch. Because those jokers don't take anything to come out. Stump number three. Just toss them around for right now. This one will probably put up a fight. I'm on steep ground, I'm facing downhill. Let's put the blade down, see if that even helps. I don't know. I don't know, it was kind of acting like it wanted to. Let's just break a couple of roots. Yeah, 
man, that's some rock or something. Yeah, that one's on the rock. So it's probably grown into the rock, making it anchored even better. Come on. Got the back end of the machine bouncing right now. There he goes. Get you some. Contenders. Take many me here. Oh, just busted him in half. Hey, looks like a twofer. Come on, big boy. Yep. Twinsies. getting it done we also burn a lot of fuel I tell y'all what it's hot today these goggles I just got yesterday let me show you here I just ran that chainsaw for about 30 minutes I'm sweating but these didn't fog up at all and that was something I was worried about get y'all some of these and the best part you can get a single piece of grit in my eyes you guys do yourselves a favor especially those of you who wear contacts get you a pair of those goggles they weren't advertised as not fogging but they probably were so get you something comparable it doesn't have to be the steel brand but those are only 25 bucks that's 25 bucks i've spent in a while my current goal is to get these trees that I just cut up sorted. I cut them up small enough where I could just throw them into the dump truck. Get myself leveled here as much as I can. So I got several small trees right there. There's stumps down here. What I'd like to do is get the stumps brought down. I've got a big pile of stumps up there. I'd like to get that brush pile mulched up and that way I'll be ready to where all I have to do tomorrow is load the truck get this stuff out of here. These logs where they won't roll down the hill.
primeira instância. Well, everybody, I didn't get these pals mulched up like I wanted to. It started raining on me when I was getting ready to head down to put the mulching head back on, and I said, hmm. Oh, no, I don't really want to do that in the rain. So instead, I came up here. Sorry, I'll keep fogging up. I decided to come on up here and start stripping this ground off. It has some really nice topsoil. I think grass is going to take really well. I worked my way from that corner back, from this corner down, and that's about how much stuff there is. That'll be a couple of truckloads of stuff to get out of here, just that stuff. All in all, I'm really happy with where I got to today. I think it was some good progress. Gonna pull all this down. We'll mulch those piles tomorrow. Probably go ahead and bring the dump truck and do a little bit of hauling too. Thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.